What can one say about Time Splitter's future purpose? Well, I suppose I'd start off by saying that it is, in fact, the single greatest FPS game ever made by human and potentially advanced alien space dog minds. Because, seriously, this game has so much game to it. It might be the single most content-filled FPS ever conceived. Let's start with the story. The story picks up right after the end of Time Splitters 2. You play as the E-Wrath's finest hero, Space Sergeant Cortez, returning from his mission to steal nine time crystals from the time splitters in the time stream. You with me so far? If not, don't worry, there was a whole game called Time Splitters 2 you should go play anyway. Now that he has the time crystals, they are plugged into a time machine, and he has to go through the entire human history to figure out where time splitters, these weird sort of like mutant alien invisible monstrosities came from, in order to stop their evil plan of destroying all of humanity and saving the world. And despite how serious this game likes to initially seem, it is a very goofball, corny game that doesn't take itself very seriously, and that's incredibly refreshing, especially for an FPS. Your time-traveling adventures will take you anywhere from the 60s to the far-flung future, but all throughout your adventures there's going to be one constant. You're going to be running around at high speed, shooting things, and having an absolute blast. Because the gameplay for even just the single-player campaign of this game is tremendous. Now this game is incredibly varied in terms of its overall gameplay, especially if you stretch out into the extra content, but we'll talk about that later. First and foremost, the FPSing in the FPS, kind of a key factor. In this game, it's done excellently. It's more of an old school Duke Nukem sort of style, very high speed game where you're running around corners, circle strafing and shooting things and not getting shot once, hiding behind a chest high wall, crying until your health regenerates. No. This game uses health packs, which automatically means it's like 50 times better than like any modern FPS. And there's an important reason why this is such a key factor in terms of gameplay. Because this means that you can't simply hide and wait for your health to regenerate. You're not, for all intents and purposes, invincible. You are very vulnerable. If you take a hit, it matters, because if you want to get healed, you have to scour the entire environment for health pickups and armor. And because of that, this game has an emphasis on exploration. Finding hidden caches of weapons and ammo, trying to find it wherever you can in a fight in order to not completely die. It works well and it creates a frantic pace to the overall gameplay. Now what's an FPS without weapons? Well, it's not much of an FPS. And this game does weapons fantastically. Each time period has its own weapon set, and each weapon does feel different from the rest. For example, you can get pistols that have silencers, yeah. Well, in Cortez's native time period, pistols suddenly reflect shots off walls. Or you can get a sniper rifle that has a built-in energy shield. Or if you're in real dire need of an actual weapon, you can even make do with a flare gun, if it's all you've got to your name. There is an incredibly wide variety of different weapons, and they're all very suitable for the various time periods you run into them in. Although there are a few anachronisms, that's actually a plot point at one point, which is kind of interesting. But the guns are not only varied, they have a great feel to them. Each one has a nice amount of kick to them, and you typically won't be shooting an enemy six or seven times before they go down. Unless, I don't know, you shoot their pinky toe with a pistol six times. Typically, each weapon has a solid amount of kick to it in terms of damage, as well as a really nice sound to it. Like, the Foley work for this was done excellently. And the overall campaign is so insane that you eventually end up running into yourself several times. Seriously, there's insane characters, there's incredibly intuitive level design, fun weapons, various approaches at gameplay, including stealth, which yes, you can do as well as specializing in sniping if that's your thing. Basically, the campaign to this game is excellent in pretty much all regards. The campaign in this game is bang on. But that's not where we're ending with gameplay because this game has a hell of a lot more than just the campaign. Next is challenge mode because this game comes with an insane number of challenges. 
You've got stuff like standing in a very cramped environment fighting a gauntlet of zombies chasing after you. You've got trying to play basketball in a game that doesn't have jumping, which is an interesting way to mess around with the physics system if nothing else. You've got RC car racing with a cat, sort of. There's even a challenge to keep Robocop monkeys dancing in a disco. This game is entirely off the wall and insane, but it all works, and the challenges just add to the overall amount of content you can unlock in this game, as well as just the overall gameplay because there's a lot of challenges. Now what do you do with all the content you unlock? Well, you move it over to the arcade mode, what would typically be referred to as multiplayer mode, but you can play it single player, which means it's excellent for me. You've got, I think I read like 150 different playable characters, up to and including a big daddy, so this game did it before Bioshock, take that. You have all the insane weapons of campaign, as well as your own custom created maps should you choose to pursue it. And of course, all the levels are really fun. My personal favorite's the Disco, although the flying airship is pretty fantastic as well. Uh, the Chinese restaurant's pretty great. They're, they're all just fantastic. It's just an insane time because, of course, there's 150 characters, as the game says, but they're all different. Like, yeah, you do get like five or six of the same generic soldier man guys, like 10 different zombies, a bunch of different robots and stuff, but you've got walking around bipedal cactus men giant floating whales, T-Rexes, a giant gingerbread man, a duck, all the different monkeys you could ever want, oh, and the most majestic creature to ever grace an FPS, all hail the mighty Robofish. And they all play a little differently due to different heights, different resistances to attacks and specific elements, speed, stamina, but I think what's even more amazing is in gameplay they've got their own voice clips so it just becomes this giant loud cacophony of random screaming and quacking and roaring and the music and the insane weapons. Basically this game is just fantastic for its arcade mode. And the arcade mode has so many different like modes you can set it to, like capture the flag or team deathmatch, or just running around shooting everyone. There's so many different modes that if you like FPS's in any sort of capacity, this is going to be down your alley. And there's so much more content in terms of just pure customization options for the arcade mode. Basically. This game has gameplay out the wazoo. This might be the single most stuff-filled FPS I've ever played. And that certainly doesn't hurt it being one of the best FPS's I've ever played, but the campaign is fantastic, challenges are well done, and of course challenging. The arcade is fun, and just the overall gameplay is tremendous. The overall presentation of Time Splitter's Future Perfect is pretty fantastic, and heavily contrasted by a lot of FPS's, especially the even more modern ones today, because this game is bright and colorful and goofy. Like, yeah, it kind of has a serious story, but it always tries to maintain a humorous personality. In fact, that's a great way to describe this game in general, is it's just got an insane amount of personality. There's a metric ton of different character models, and once again, while they might fall into the same generic class of generic soldier or generic henchman from the 60s or whatever, they all have their own unique model, and that's heavily appreciated because it makes each individual character, even just the generic grunts you run into, feel more like real people. And it makes it feel like every character has their own personality, which is fantastic. The overall level aesthetics are quite fitting for their time periods and quite memorable. And because this game takes a more brighter stylistic approach to visual design, it helps it stand out, even though it is a fair bit older than the more modern FPS's. Basically, this thing looks timeless. The audio presentation of this game is, once again, fantastic. I've touched on this, how it's just one giant loud cacophony of insane sounds in arcade mode. The weapons, of course, once again, sound fantastic for what they need to do. There was some great Foley work here. The voice acting is tremendous. And really, everything about the sound is just great. Basically, presentation-wise, Time Splitter is, once again, along with the gameplay, just an excellent all-rounded package that is really a delight to play. Now, if you want to get a copy of Time Splitter's Future Perfect, it's held its price pretty well. It tends to sit at about $30, regardless of its region and regardless of the system it's on. I will say that while this was available on the Xbox, PS2, and GameCube, I would dissuade you away from playing the GameCube version if you can help it, and that's because I've actually got the GameCube version of the sequel, Time Splitters 2, and aiming with the C stick on the GameCube controller just isn't very fun. Still a great game, but ultimately, if you want more precision and more enjoyable FPS experience, 
the GameCube version is not the way to go on this. But for $30, I would say it's a game that is fantastic, if only for the single-player campaign. Not even including the challenges, not including all the unlockables, not including the arcadey multiplayer, whatever you want to call it, mode. Basically, this game is great, especially if you like unlocking things, because there is a lot of things to unlock, and it's a great challenge to try and unlock all of it. And that is why this is the single greatest FPS of all time. It takes old school run and gun fun and just tries to cram as much stuff in as possible without losing sight of the fact that it's just trying to be a great, fun, upbeat, goofy game. It understands the absurdity of its own plot and its characters and it just rolls with it. And I think it works to the game's benefit greatly. Overall, Time Splitters Future Perfect is probably my favorite FPS of all time. Even more than like the classic Doom or Duke Nukem or whatever. No, no. Time Splitters Future Perfect. Best FPS. Which makes me really sad because this is the most recent entry in the series and it's over a decade old. Yeah. I mean, supposedly there's going to be like a uh, weird multiplayer compilation thing on the PS4 at some point, which, I mean, I guess that's a thing, but come on, just give us Time Splitters 4, damn it. We need to see the return of the almighty Robo Fish. This should take us to Crow's secret lab. Ah, I'm ready. I pressed it already. Yeah, right. Ah. So, been with the agency long? Uh, yeah. Uh, mm. Three three years in May. Uh, you get dental? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's good. Mm. Yeah! Time to split! I'll get the next one. <laughs> 